welcome to the Active IQ eClinic covering recognition of prior learning, also known as RPL, exemptions and equivalences. Aims and objectives. By the end of this session, you will be able to understand the definition of RPL, exemptions and equivalences or credit transfer, what types of evidence would be suitable for RPL, exemption or equivalence, the principles of RPL, the RPL process, and you will have completed standardisation activities in which you will require the standardisation resources that have been sent to you for this section. RPL exemption and equivalence definitions. RPL, which is recognised prior learning, is a process allowing learners to proceed directly to assessment using evidence of all their relevant prior learning. Exemption is certificated learning from non-QCF provision. Equivalence is certificated learning from QCF provision. Firstly, let's look at equivalences, which is certificated prior learning from a QCF unit, which is agreed as equivalent to the unit to claim credit against. So how can an equivalence be identified? Firstly, all QCF units have a unique code to identify them. The unit code shown on the learner certificate will match the unit being completed or claimed for. Should there be an instance where the unit code is different, but the learning outcomes and assessment criteria are the same, this may also be applicable, although a thorough mapping exercise will be required. For example, the learner is completing the Level 2 Fitness Instructing Gym Qualification. Unit 1 is the anatomy and physiology of, for exercise, and here is the unit code shown. The learner has previously completed a level 2 fitness instructing exercise to music qualification and their unit breakdown also shows the same unit with the same code. So this means there is a, an equivalence so it can be accepted. Here you can see the equivalence example in an illustration. So the first bit is the unit included in the learner's current qualification, so this is the one that they're completing. As you can see, it says unit 1, it's got the unit code, the level, the credit value and also the unit title. The second image is the portion of the certificate that needs to be submitted to claim the credit for that unit. And as you can see where the arrow is pointing clearly shows the anatomy and physiology for exercise unit with the same code. Therefore, this equivalence can be accepted. Exemptions, which is certificated prior learning from a non-QCF unit, which is agreed as equivalent to the unit being claimed. So how can an exemption be identified? Firstly, the qualification or unit would be deemed current so it's up to date and relevant. The assessment criteria and methods would also be deemed equivalent, so they are the same. For example, learner is completing the Level 2 Fitness Instructing Gym Qualification, Unit 1, Anatomy and Physiology for Exercise, and here is the unit code shown, which is the QCF code. You would need to map from the NQF version of the Level 2 Fitness Instructing Gym Unit 1, which the learner has previously completed, in which it shows assessment criteria and methods are the same. So this would be deemed as an exemption. Contact your EV should you require further assistance when considering exemptions. Here is an example of the exemption mapping that you will need to complete with the learners to show the exemption can be accepted. The first illustration shows the assessment criteria across the top 
which is 1.1 to 3.3 and the ticks in the current unit that the learner is completing and also shows the certificated unit. So here you can see all of the assessment criteria maps into the current unit. So this exemption would be accepted. The second illustration again shows the assessment criteria from the current unit and also against the certificated unit in which this illustration 2.1 assessment criteria has not been covered by the certificated unit. So therefore the exemption would not be accepted. There are clear gaps. Exemptions can only be applied if all of the outcomes and assessment criteria are met in line with specific guidance. Exemptions. Be aware. Learners are not awarded credit for any exemptions, so this will have a direct effect on funding. Therefore, exempt units do not have a new credit value. The exempt units will still be identified and detailed within the unit breakdown on the learner certificate, and therefore the exemption process must be managed by the centre and declared and recorded as required by the funding body as learners will not receive any funding for any exemptions. RPL principles. Individuals should not be required to repeat things that they have already learnt. RPL enables individuals to claim credit for units in the QCF, irrespective of how their learning took place. Policies, processes, procedures, practices and decisions should be transparent, rigorous, reliable, fair and accessible. RPL should be a learner-centred and learner-led voluntary process. Guidance and support should be offered to support a claim for credit through RPL to the learner from the centre. The process of assessment for RPL is subject to the same quality assurance standards. Assessment methods must be of equal rigour as other assessment methods, must be fit for purpose and relate to the evidence of learning. RPL can only be applied to all learning outcomes and assessment criteria in a unit. No credit can be applied to partial units. Let's look at the RPL process. Firstly, the learner and tutor must be aware of any RPL. The learner would then complete a skills scan to show what they have completed in the past and how it maps to current criteria. You would gather the evidence such as certificates, CVs, CPD logs, and you would map the evidence to the learning outcomes and assessment criteria within the current unit. The assessment would take place to make a clear decision and then the assessment decision is fed back to the learner on the RPL decision. This includes written and verbal feedback. And lastly, advice on further learning and development. Either the RPL is accepted or you may need to complete an individual learning plan with the learner to identify the gaps and how they're going to meet them. The RPL process. Learner and tutor awareness of RPL. A centre must train their team to be able to inform learners of the opportunity for RPL. A centre must have the resources in place to guide and support learners through the RPL process. A centre and its team must understand the ActiveIQ RPL process and the requirements associated with it. Ideally, this should be identified upon enrolment. Learner skill scan. A learner approaches the centre stating they feel they have the skills to claim credit for a particular unit. The centre supports the learner to identify relevant knowledge, skills and competencies. Points for consideration. Is this claim actually an exemption or equivalence?
which unit or units may be appropriate to claim credit for. Does the learner possess all the skills and competencies as required by the learning outcomes and assessment criteria of the unit? What evidence would demonstrate competence? Here is an illustration of a skills scan. So at the top you see all the assessment criteria and down the side you've got the evidence. So here the learner is submitting Certificate of Learning, which is a certificate. Obviously you would detail the exact title of the certificate. Workplace training, which could include personal development plans and appraisals to show competencies. Regular working practice, which could include witness testimonies and CPD logs. And other staff training, which could include other certificates and training curriculum. So as you can see, all of these assessment criteria has been met across the various evidence. The RPL process. Learner gathers the evidence together, including copies of their certificates, CVs, witness testimonies, personal development plans as detailed. The evidence is then assessed against the learning outcomes and assessment criteria. An assessment decision is made and detailed. Feedback is given to the learner and then future development planning occurs. Here is an example where the RPL assessment decision can be accepted. So the RPL evidence is assessed. The learner has sufficient knowledge to meet all of the assessment criteria within a unit. The learner has sufficient evidence of comparable competence to meet all the assessment criteria within a unit. The evidence meets VAR, so it's valid, authentic, reliable, sufficient and current. And therefore, the unit can be certified with no further assessment. Here is an illustration of RPL assessment decision where the learner can be fast-tracked. So the RPL evidence is assessed. The learner has sufficient knowledge to meet all assessment criteria within a unit, but the learner has insufficient evidence of comparable competence to meet all assessment criteria within unit. The evidence still meets VARX. So the learner can be fast-tracked through the unit assessments because they've shown sufficient knowledge, but insufficient competence. So they could be fast tracked straight to the assessment without completing the learning. Here is an illustration of an RPL assessment decision where it's insufficient, so it would not be accepted. Firstly, the RPL evidence is assessed. The learner has insufficient knowledge to meet all assessment criteria within a unit and or the learner has insufficient evidence of comparable competence to meet all assessment criteria within a unit and or the evidence does not meet VARX. Therefore, an individual learning plan is put in place to fill the knowledge and skills gaps and the learner completes all assessments for this unit once learning is complete. Claiming RPL exemption and equivalence at Active IQ. All RPL claims, exemptions and equivalences should be claimed utilising the APA option within Quartz Web. RPL exemption and equivalence claims, or APA claims, will be monitored by the EVs as part of the usual EV quality assurance strategy. The evidence being used for RPL exemption and equivalence claims must be available for the following EV activities. EV on-site activities, desktop samples and spot checks. Now we're going to complete various standardisation exercises. Here you will need the resources that have been previously sent to you. We're going to take you through a common RPL scenario. You will need to apply the knowledge you have now gained to make a decision regarding RPL and the course of action you would take. Scenario 
a learner who is enrolled on a level 3 certificate in sports massage approaches you and discusses that they have been working as a gym instructor for over 10 years and they feel they have the skills and knowledge to be able to RPL Unit 1 and 2 of this qualification. So Unit 1 is the Anatomy and Physiology of Exercise which is at Level 2 standard and Unit 2 is the Principles of Exercise, Fitness and Health at Level 2 standard. What would you guide the learner to do in the first instance? Pause the slide here and complete question 1A. Standardisation exercise 1B. The learner brings in copies of their certificate showing they have an old qualification which was completed in 2003, which showed within the unit breakdown that they had completed a unit on anatomy and physiology. However, there was no description of any level of attainment. There was no unit detailed which covered the principles of exercise, fitness and health. What action would you take and what would you advise the learner to do? Pause the slide here and complete question 1b. Standardisation exercise 1c. The learner follows up by providing the original certificate, however, it is found that the assessment methods were not robust enough to meet the current standards and there were small gaps in the prior learning when compared to the current standards for Unit 1. What action would you take and what would you advise the learner to do? Pause the slide here and complete question 1c. Standardisation exercise 2a. A learner who has completed a range of qualifications and experiential learning submits the RPL application and associated evidence as shown in standardisation resource 1. What action would you take and what decision would you make? Pause the slide here and complete question 2a. Standardisation exercise 2b. Design an individual learning plan taking into account the evidence witnessed so far. Pause the slide here to complete question 2b. Standardisation exercise 3. A learner who has completed a range of qualifications and experiential learning submits the RPL application and associated evidence as shown in standardisation resource 2. What action would you take and what decision would you make? Would there be any additional evidence which could support the occupational competence sections of this application to provide sufficient evidence to allow credit to be claimed for this unit? Pause the slide here to complete question 3a and 3b. Aims and objectives recap. So now concludes the end of this session. You should now be able to understand the definition of RPL, exemptions and equivalences or credit transfer, what types of evidence would be suitable for RPL, exemption or equivalence, the principles of RPL, the RPL process, and you have completed numerous standardisation activities. Well done and thank you for your participation.